what do you call yourself? Eh? Como se llama? Antonio Montana. And you? What you call yourself? Where'd you learn to speak the English, Tony? Uh, in a school. And my father, he was uh, from the United States. Yeah, just like you, you know. He was a Yankee. Uh, he used to take me a lot to the movies, you know. I learned. I watched the guys like uh, Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney. They, they teach me to talk. I like those guys. I always know one day I'm coming here, United States. 1980, Miami. They called it Little Havana, where the American dream had a price tag, and only one man in a million was hungry enough to pay. This country, you gotta make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. Scarface. For one brief moment, the world was his. I check this way. She liked me. He must be kidding. What are you talking about? That's a Cadillac. How do you know? The eyes, Chico. They never lie. Man, that's the boss's lady, okay? I am the boss. That guy's soft. I like you, Tony. There is no lying in you. Here's to the land of opportunity. We do business together a long time. I know the street, and I'm making all the right connections. Remember I told you when you started, the guys who last in this business the guys who fly straight. With the right woman, there's no stopping me. I could go right to the top. Okay. The word on the street, Tony, is you're not a small-time punk anymore. The Supreme Court says that your privacy can be invaded. You suit the house this month? You're spending a lot of money on this counter surveillance. We're doing 10 million, 15 million a month. Come on. Now, that's serious money, you know? Did your bank boys gotta come down a bit? Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us when you do. You trust us. You're in good hands with us. Al Pacino is Scarface. He loved the American dream. With a vengeance. Al Pacino, Scarface. De Niro. In Bang the Drum Slowly, the critics called him a brilliant new talent. After Mean Streets, they said he was a genius. For his performance in The Godfather Part II, they gave him the Academy Award. Come on, man. Just get me out of here, all right? Now, Robert De Niro creates a terrifying portrait of life on the edge of madness. Tabby, just forget about this. It's nothing. Taxi Driver, a film by Martin Scorsese. Yeah, people do anything in front of a taxi driver. I mean, anything. People too cheap to, to rent a hotel room. Oh, driver, hurry up, will you? People want to embarrass you. It's like you're not even there. It's like, you know, like a taxi driver doesn't even exist. This city here is... Like an open sewer, you know? It's full of filth and scum. I think I know what you mean, Travis. But it's not going to be easy. Them guys got to be a Secret Service man. Why? Well, I was just curious, because I thought maybe I'd make a good one. Hey, what kind of guns do you guys carry? 38s, 45s, 357 Magnums, something bigger, maybe? I'd like to volunteer. Why? Why? Because I think that you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. The taxi driver is looking for a target. Getting ready. Getting organized. Preparing himself for the only moment in his life that will ever mean anything. Huh? How much for everything? 
350 for the Magnum, 250 for the 38, one and a quarter for the 25, 150 for the 380. That taxi driver's been staring at us. You talking to me? You talking to me? I don't know who's weirder, you or me. <laughs> you talking to me? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. I don't believe I've ever met anyone quite like you. Oh, yeah? You will never see a more chilling performance okay. than this. Robert De Niro in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Millions of years ago, before the human race existed, an adventure began. An adventure that ultimately leads man to confront his own destiny in an odyssey of exploration. Here's what started the whole thing. Well, we thought it might be the upper part of some buried structure, so we excavated out on all sides. And what's more, it seems to have been deliberately buried. A shrieking monolith, deliberately buried by an alien intelligence, starts man on a mission half a billion miles into space. With three of its five crew asleep in hibernation, spacecraft Discovery One voyages towards Jupiter, controlling the mission is a talking computer known as Hal. Hal, you're the brain and central nervous system of the ship. Does this ever cause you any lack of confidence? Let me put it this way, Mr. Amer. No 9,000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. In the first year of the 21st century, there is strange and wondrous beauty, startling experiences that jolt and mystify and the danger of complete obliteration. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. And now, your journey is just beginning.